Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode where today we are going to be working on our carrier. My main goals today are just to set up everything mechanically so it's all functioning. So I want the bombers on the top, I want the ability to move backwards at the moment, we simply can't do that, which is really bad for how the AI is set up. I want the back section complete, at least mostly, so we know where the thrusters are, and then I want some proper tests versus things like the bull walk just hitting this over and over again to see how well it can take damage. Also, after reading a lot of comments, it seems like the vast majority of people don't like the cram cannons on the front, and I have to agree. After doing more tests, they are somewhat effective, but it just doesn't feel right on this craft, so I will be removing those and most likely adding one small turret on the bottom, and after that, the rest of the front is just going to be armor, more armor, and perhaps some storage. And that's about that. Now, I do need some other weapons, though, on this craft. As much as I want it to be just a pure carrier, only really using the aircraft as weapons, it's just not resource efficient enough. This thing is going to be very expensive, it's going to take up a lot of volume, and it just won't make it versus a lot of enemies, since that volume usage will be way too high if it itself can't fight back, at least somewhat. So, with all that out of the way, I'm going to remove the cram cannons first and start sorting out the front. Okay, now the crams have been removed, we have this chamber here, which already has three layers of armor, but we could do with more. We have this chamber in the center, then we have two small chambers on both sides. Underneath, we now have two more large chambers, which house the bottom two crams. We have the central section, which I was going to use for some internal deadly blades, and I still might do now. And then we go to the spine of the craft. Then we have a few little pockets here and there, which I kind of want to just leave as airspace. Counter certain types of shells. That's a lot of space for armor. In fact, it's a lot of space for pretty much anything. So I think I'm going to do is add a secondary engine in the top space. I'm going to add a third engine very soon in the spine. So we have two in the spine, one in the front, and then one in the back. So we have four engines total. That should make us very difficult to take out the sky. A lot of redundancy there. And a lot of power, which means we can use that for perhaps shields. Ooh, we could go shield heavy. I haven't used shields um, since I've came back to the game. Apparently, they're not as good as they used to be, which I actually quite like, since I didn't like how just dominant shield builds could be, both on my side and on the enemies. Yeah, let's go with shields. See if we can heavily fortify the front and the top here. I'm also going to build our seating area here. So that's going to extend out, go up like this, and then have glass all the way around it. So it looks pretty, and it's a good little defense structure from here. That will then attach to this and make it look a bit less... Uh, what's the word? Sticky outy. Just there. Weird. Potato. Onion. Okay, so I'm raising this up by one, so I have a bit more space for the front here. And I have finally added the sub-vehicle spawners. With these, it means now whenever I spawn in the craft, it also spawns in the planes. They are now officially tied together. And that'll make life a lot easier during testing. I'm messing around with different ideas over here, and I'm not happy at all with how this has turned out. I do like the idea of these being on runways to the main bridge area, but not like that. So, I'm going to tear all that down, start again, but I think I know what I'm doing this time. <laughs> Me knowing what I'm doing. Well, I was apparently talking to myself for over five minutes with the microphone off, so let me repeat everything I just said. So I've now added five of the anti-air weapons on the top. These are all just the simple weapons. We could go with advanced cannons, but these are cheap, and honestly, I love how they look. I have added loads of armor to the top here, so it all sticks with the very heavily armored theme of the craft. Sadly, that means most of the wood has been removed, which is always a shame. I love how wood looks in this game. I try and use it everywhere I can. Now, three of the anti-air weapons are the expensive ones, and then the other two are the middle ground versions. The arc of fire for them all is a bit limited, but I love how they are sort of going into the armor itself. It looks like they've been placed to be protected, which they kind of are. So I think any small aircraft should be absolutely mowed down by this. And now I continue to blend that all the way back here, and then we can start adding the flares and some anti-missile systems. Then more engines, then the shields, then the back, something like that.
Now the issue with these anti-air weapons is just the fact they're on top of the craft. Most likely the carrier will be quite high up and that's going to be an issue with these hitting anything. So I might need to put some on the bottom or just on the side so they can aim down. Right now these can't. So that's something I will have to change. What I could do is extend this and then put them on the very edge. That would be pretty easy actually. Here we are, we now have some guns on the outside which are able to fire down. This should deal with very small enemies quite easily. So any harassment vehicle should have a much tougher time now taking out the carrier. Don't think we're going to go with much more than this, probably a couple extra on the very back, but that's about it for that. Still trying to decide on what normal weaponry this thing's going to actually carry. Two small cram cannons... Maybe a third somewhere? We could put that on the back as well. Not too sure just yet. You can do some really extreme things these days with the smoke generators. That looks... so bizarre. Yeah, the options for them now is kind of insane, honestly. Like, proper little vortexes. Because that screams good guy, right? Just evil red smog. So, we now have a total of five small engines throughout the craft, and any two of them can support the craft completely. I'm going to be adding one more near the end. Is this a waste? Potentially no, if we go down the route of shields. So, with shields, then, I have not touched these since I've came back to From the Depths, and honestly... I wasn't particularly great with them before. Oh yeah, there's the new shields. Everyone keeps on telling me to use these. At some point I will. Right now though, I want to focus on the original, the projectors. Let's see how expensive these things are, because I really can't remember at all. Should be larger than one times one. Yeah, probably. I mean, that's not really going to help out all that much, is it? So let's say I want it to be a big boy. Of evil. Interesting. So this now is consuming... Is that There we are. Power usage 31, so that's nothing. But if we increase the strength... So strength 10 is probably going to be out of the question since we want multiple of these. Unless we have one main one. Which we'll use that much. And then normally wanted to angle. Now, I've been told that shields are not as good as they used to be, so... Again, that looks so evil. Thankfully, we can make that invisible, but still. Wow, we can go completely invisible now. I remember before, there was still like a very vague look to it. Um, which is actually what I want. There we are. I want it to be almost invisible, but just about seen. So I can at least tell if it's still online. If we go down to strength 5, we can probably cover the entire front. And if we don't go too far away, we might actually be able to get away with it being a bit stronger. As you can see, the power spikes drastically as you increase the range. That's almost using up all of my engine power now. By itself. Okay. I'll be placing these around the front, and then we'll do a test. Just letting something fire at it. Maybe cram cannons. Because I do want to see how cram cannons will do. Now, slower shells normally are more effective versus shields. They get through more often, but we are going to be seeing a lot of cram early on. So, after a few tests, I've came to the conclusion I'm not going to be using shields. The main reason is, even when they were successful at deflecting, which was about one quarter of the time, about one quarter of the shells were completely deflected. The issue is, almost all enemies which use crams use inertial fuses. Which means they just then detonate, and we don't have enough power to have these shields cover everything and be further away. So the explosion is still going to do a drastic amount of damage to the ship. And I'm not willing to put enough power to make them more effective. So I think what might be better is a laser munition defense. And we can put that at the front. That way we can shoot down crams and missiles and everything else before they get to us. And we could use that instead of the flare system. Maybe. First test. Go. 
Let's see if we can stop some cram cannons. I'll take that as a yes. Okay, so the system currently is from here to here. And what it is, is it's very heavy on energy storage, but less so being able to get that energy from the engines. So its first defense will be very, very effective. But it's likely to get overwhelmed under sustained fire. But I mean, if it can stop a volley from the crossbones, I'll be very happy. I've also added a single um, Deadly Blight in the center, so now it moves backwards from the target if possible, staying at about 1,000 meters. Hence why it's matching the speed of the crossbones. Which looks really weird when you watch them both together. Okay, that was great. I mean, here's the thing. I would really like to just use the anti-munition system with the advanced cannons, allowing them to fire at the shells. But I think that only works on missiles. I don't think it actually allows you to fire at cram as well. Yeah, it's an anti-missile controller. That's a shame. Oops, turned on the weaponry there. Didn't mean to do that. That is ridiculous. Oh, I wonder if the shells are detonating each other. That could be it. We're destroying one, and then the explosion's doing the rest. Also, I wonder if I maxed out the range of these things, if we could be helpful to the poor darts, rather than just ourselves. Those are more staggered, but they met the same fate. So what I'm finding is after three full attacks from the Plunderer, that's when we start to struggle. And then we're only taking out about two out of three of the shells. So it's the second shot, and yep, absolutely fine. But then we start to run out of the reserve power, and we don't really have enough engine power to keep up that sort of strength. But that is still plenty, and missiles fare far worse than cram shells. Yep, there we go. So two or three still managed to get through near the end. Don't want to dedicate any more to this? Not particularly. Although one of my cylinders is overheating because when the engines are fly strong, so it keeps on overheating over and over again because the exhausts aren't actually outside the craft. I'll dealt with that one. So this would really lower how much damage we're taking. But it would require a lot more engine uses and thus a lot more fuel. So I'm actually tempted to say, is it even worth it? But saying that... I had to stop that attack again. It'll save resources on repairs. So I decided we're not going to be adding that laser defense system. The reason is sheer cost. Not only was the fuel cost astronomical to keep that much engine power constantly going, the actual system itself cost 30,000 all by itself. And that's just not worth it on such a cheap carrier. Well, I say cheap, for how big it is, it is pretty cheap, because it doesn't have many expensive components. And I've just been allowing it to get shot at for the last, like, five minutes, and it's still airborne. This thing is just surviving. And this is without the back section, which is going to have all the stuff on the front in duplicate, which means as long as either the back or the front is up, it's still going to be airborne. Just sheer armour. I think that's how it should be. And if it can survive this long, our bombers will easily devour things like this. Now, I may end up re-adding the laser system after I've done more research on it so I can make them a bit more efficiently, and after reading the comments, if people really like it, I might end up bringing it back in a, in a smaller function. But for now... I think it would be best, if we had any anti-missile stuff at all, to go with the original plan. So, missile interceptors, maybe an anti-missile cannon, something like that, rather than lasers. And honestly, I think that fits the theme better anyway than lasers. Oh, it's poor front. 
Okay, here go the interceptors, and they are using the new components, or at least new for me, which will attract radar-guided missiles. Essentially, it's a flare, but for radar-guided rather than infrared. And it's definitely working. The enemy missiles are going after these rather than our craft. A lot of them being diverted there. Where are they even going? Um, did I not give them the proper interceptor head? No, I did. Then what were they after? Well, either way, it worked. It's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. It distracted the enemy missiles, but it should have gone after an enemy missile as well, which was curious that didn't happen. Bad timing on the second lot. Okay, this time they're actually going after the missiles and destroying them, so that's actually working fantastically. Just a bit of a slow reload. I did also test out using the small missiles, and honestly, I do not like small missile interceptors. The main problem is just this. The max radar simulator signal strength is really low, even on quite a large small missile. It sounds silly, but... Even the larger of the small just don't get enough strength, and the enemy missiles never chase them. These seem really good for quite a low cost. Yep, I think I might just keep it like that. Against an enemy which isn't spamming missiles like the Abomination, I think they'll be more than capable of defending this thing. Okay, so I've added some munition warners all over the craft, which I'll re-armor up later. And I've also added an internal deadly blade in the spine where the cram cannon used to be, which means now this craft can move backwards. That's why it's so perfectly stable now. Rather than trying to circle all the time to reach the point it wants to get to, it can just sit there because it can, you know, reverse. Which is weird. For a second, I honestly thought my controls were broken and I thought I was holding this in the build mode, but nope, it is just this stable. It's always bizarre when you get to that moment when building an aircraft or a hovercraft or an airship. So now really, we need to do the back, then I'm going to do the top section which is where the two bombers are going to rest. I'm most likely going to use one of the heavy bombers and one of the penguins. The heavy bomber still needs a name, but the penguin is the penguin. So, so we have the dart, the penguin, and the thing which looks like a bar of soap or an electric razor or just a potato who's particularly angry this day. Just for reference, I did actually have the ability to turn backwards earlier with some really basic propulsion, but that was not going to be the permanent one. This, on the other hand, is. And it's absolutely tiny. We have layers of armor on both sides, and this is more than enough to drive the whole thing backwards at a decent speed. Still need to finish off this internal area, though. It's a lot smaller than it looks from the outside because I have layers of armor and, well, not much space to work with. Here's one of the engines on the bottom, all protected by several layers of armor as well. Don't know what I'm using this space for. There's a lot of space like that. So here's how the back is going to look at the moment. It looks a little bit dull, obviously, since I haven't done anything with it, but it's also looking a bit stumpy. The reason is that the volume of this is starting to spike now, and I don't want the total volume, which will also include the two bombers, to go over about 23,000. Now, 23,000 volume is exactly what the trebuchet is. The trebuchet here is... 23,102, and this is so much smaller looking than our current craft, but our craft has no major weapons, it has this hollow section in the middle, there's a lot less to it. But I still don't want the total of this to exceed the total of that. Don't really know why, just, I like using the trebuchet as a reference, because it's a very powerful craft, but it's not huge, but it's not small either. So... Stumpy it is. Now, although this will be stumpy, it's going to have probably more armor than the front does because this is going to house the main AI. I think the secondary AI will likely be in the front since we have space, and the secondary AI is going to man all of the light weaponry. If we do add a, a main weapon, then the main AI will hold that. Other than that, though, it's just going to be an extra engine, turning thrusters, pitch thrusters, and an extra deadly blade. So lots more backup to keep this thing in the air. Now, one thing to note is I am going to be changing up the engines. If we don't end up using the shields or anything else which uses energy, like the anti-munition system, we don't need this much engine power, even as a backup. So what I'm going to do is keep the number of engines the same, but make them far smaller. So still the same amount of redundancy, but we just don't need this much power. At the moment, one engine can actually suffice the entire craft. We already have five of them.
Bear in mind though, thankfully the engines don't take up any fuel if they're not currently on. So although we have this excess of engine power, it's not like we're using excess fuel. It's just the cost of making the engine in the first place and the space it's taking up, all the extra volume for pretty much nothing. We could add some more basic weapons, some more basic cram cannons on the back, which I'm thinking of as well, stuff like that. Okay, just finished painting it, and that looks about right. Now, that's not actually incorrect paint. That's the light getting through. I did try and paint this like three times, and I was very confused for a brief while. I admit, it does look fairly arc-like, but I do really like how it's turned out. So now, just to do the insides, add all the redundant systems, then figure out if we are going to add any major weapons. After that, we can start working on the top of the craft. Obviously, this is not done yet. In fact, it has ammo there still. And that's going to hold the two bombers. I think I'm going to use Mimics in order to make it look like the bombers are being held a fair bit above the runway. Just because the bombers are not quite as agile as the darts. And getting them away from the craft fast enough can be an issue if they're lying right on the runway. Now, of course, we could add rubber to the runway. That would prevent any damage being dealt if they do ram into it, but I just really do not like how rubber looks in this game. It's an interesting look to it, and in its place, I think it looks really good, but at a distance, it's that line effect it gives. Just not personally a fan. I can see why some people would like it, but me personally, no. So, now all of you are stopping your messing around, let's make the back more functional. And finish off painting everywhere. Okay, one large deadly blade in the very centre of the craft, with the centre of mass. This should help out a lot. It's set to always up. And that should make sure there's a bit more stability as it loses the other thrusters. Or at least, well, less stability, more forcing this thing to stay in the air, even if it's tilting. Okay, yep, yeah, there was a pretty safe release on both of the bombers. There goes the penguin, and there goes the soap bar of death. Some of the explosions aren't quite showing up, which is interesting, but yeah, straight away, so much damage dealt. And it's not even focusing on craft it can actually hit, which is good for me. There we go. Delayed animation there. This always seems to happen when I've been in the sandbox mode for too long. The game seems to slowly get worse. I am considering using two of the heavy bombers instead of the penguin, at least to begin with. The penguin is fantastic, but it's best versus things like the trebuchet. Heavy armor, but vulnerable insides. With things like the Plunderer, all you really want is sheer damage, just blasting the outside away. Okay, so then, what we need to do is start adding Mimics, so it's looking like that's being held, and we need to actually add things to the back. Currently, the back is just empty. Okay, adding up the volume of all the craft total, we are just over 22,000 volume, and our cost is just over 210,000. Not bad for how many craft we have, and still cheaper than trebuchet in both volume and cost. But we are hitting a bit of a limit here. I can't see myself using this now until probably the final fights versus the Deepwater Guard. Thankfully, these two can be modified quite easily to add some more fuel to them, so they can be used on their own without the carrier. But the darts really do want the carrier. Though, now they are more efficient, we could even just add some more fuel to them and make an independent version that don't need no carrier. It's hard to say. When it comes to our major weapons, though, I'm really not sure. If we do add a major weapon now, we still have space for one spinally mounted cram cannon or advanced cannon. But both would be expensive, especially the advanced cannon option. We could simply add a missile system. That would be very small, volume-wise, but very costly. We could add, essentially, just a couple of large cruise missiles, perhaps four of them. Which will begin the fight, just for loads of burst damage at the start, and then relying on loads of simple weapons. I am definitely going to be adding more simple weapons to the side, the back anyway, so we are going to be covered in these things. And they've actually proven to be quite good versus even medium-sized wooden armor craft. Against the Onyx Swatch and such, I'm sure they're useless, but versus the Deepwater Guard, maybe they're okay. So with that, I am going to call the episode here. 
I don't think I've got quite as far as I wanted, but there's still a lot of choices to make, and I'm not quite sure where to go with them. And rather than just force myself to go ahead and add whatever, I would like to add a final version. So in the next episode will be me finishing the carrier, no matter how long it takes, and at least one proper battle where we have multiple opponents, we don't have god mode on, and so we can test out the bombers going after large craft, the dart, acting as interceptors, and hopefully it'll be really fun to watch, and somewhat effective. This is definitely not going to be the most effective way to field any of these, but it's been a load of fun, and it is something different. Also, I kind of like how this top section here has turned out. It looks a bit like a Pokemon. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff. Helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye.